Hi guys, welcome to Switched On. Paul here, and another in our series of What Is videos. And this time it's the new game Forager, which came out this week on the Nintendo Switch eShop. So I'm just going to take you through some of the early gameplay of this and have a little chat about what it's all about. So first of all, it's a um, sort of 2D crafting exploration game. It sort of says it molds itself on a cross between Stardew Valley, Minecraft, and Zelda. So it's got quite the uh, quite the game to live up to quite the names first thing i'm going to show you here is on the title screen it's got a roadmap which i don't know if I, i'm probably not going to do a full review of this game but um if i was i would probably be bemoaning the fact that this almost feels like it's in early access a bit like it is on steam because at the moment we've got here the base game but this roadmap here outlines what's coming in the future we've got um, farm life which obviously puts more of an emphasis on farming a combat update and then there's some unknown things here that are coming down the line. I believe one of them is multiplayer. But you know what I mean? It just feels like they're getting you to pay sort of, I think it's £20, around about that, £17. And um, for a game that's, you know, it just doesn't feel finished. There is a good game here, and I'll talk about more of that in a minute. But, you know, I don't know whether to be pleased that they've got these sort of free updates. I assume they're free anyway. Free updates coming soon. But also it feels a little bit disingenuous to say, well, here's the basics of the game. Give us 17 quid now and then um, we'll add the rest of what we want to, you know, make the full game into down the line sometime. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below about that. Whether you feel like this is a an early access game and whether you mind the free updates coming down the line or whether you think we should wait and get the full experience or at least have a, a lesser price at launch. You know, uh, on early access on Steam, you sort of can buy the early access versions of games. I, I don't necessarily know about Forager on Steam, but for example, say if this was, I don't know, £8 or £10 to start with, um, and you know, those early adopters got it at a low price, but on the understanding that the extras were coming down the line, and then when the full game was finished, it was then sort of £20 for, for new buyers. I don't know, something like that. But anyway... Let me know what you think. So we're going to start a new game. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about this game. So it starts off here, literally chucks you into this world, no explanation, and it just asks you to press B to open the menu. And again, it doesn't really tell you anything, but it just tells you, you know, by the virtue of this flashing exclamation mark, to click on here, and then you've got a menu on the side, which is sort of encourages you to click on industrial. And then furnace, as you'll see there, is um, highlighted. And you click on that. It doesn't tell you what to do. It just, you know, you can kind of work out that you need 10 stone to build the furnace. And that's what the game wants you to do. But as I say, it doesn't give you any indication of what you should do. It doesn't even tell you what buttons to press. But, you know, you can kind of figure it out. It's not the hardest game to play. So you move your character around here. That we're calling the Forager. Hold down X. And you start wailing away with your pickaxe and then pick up these materials. So that was um, stone and iron ore I got. These bushes give you berries, and they refill your stamina. If you look in the top left-hand corner, you've got a stamina bar. Now, I haven't really, I've run the stamina out enough to say, oh, I'm tired, I'm hungry, um, but I've not seen any real consequence. You know, like in Stardew Valley, when you get tired, you sort of pass out and get sent back home, or you know, at least can't do any more actions. I don't really get the feeling with Forager, so I don't know, maybe we'll, We'll run it out until he's got absolutely no energy left and see what happens. But we want that um, crafting station. What was it? I can't remember what it was called. Furnace. And to get that, he said we needed 10 stones. I'm just going to collect all the stone on this little island. The game starts on these little plots of land. So this is literally all the land we've got at the moment, just this square. And the aim of the game is to expand your land out by buying new land by getting gold but let's see we've got 19 stone now so let's click on the b button again to get up our menu and you see some resources we've collected here we use the r button to go across the build and industrial and furnace so we can now build our furnace and let's bonk it down now and that's sort of encouraging us to build a forge which you can see needs four iron ingots and four bricks both of which we don't have yet so we need to assume but now we've built the furnace, we need to use it to get our iron ingots and bricks, and indeed there they are. So bricks needs um, ba -bum -ba -ba, nine stone, of which we have two at the moment, and iron ingots needs four iron ore, 
of which we have two. And for doing anything in the furnace, you're gonna need uh, fuel, so coal. So it tells you there we need one coal to fire up four iron ore. And with brick is the same as one coal. Now you get coal by burning wood. And you need two wood to make a coal. So we need to go and chop down some trees. Now on these lands, you may sort of see as I'm talking away here that the resources sort of just spawn. As you knock down um, different items in the game. Oh, we've got a citrus off that tree. Um, as we take resources off the, the tile that we're on at the moment, new resources will just randomly spawn. So you may notice if you keep your eyes peeled that as we take sort of trees and rocks away, other trees and rocks appear in the background. And then as we open up new lands, there'll be different things as well that start popping up. So here we go, he's saying he's hungry because we've run the energy down. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep chopping away for a little while. And just see if he actually does pass out or it costs him hearts. You see we've got three hearts at the top. Because I'm, I'm interested myself to see what the repercussions of not eating are. Because I got to the point yesterday, ah, there we go, so that's good. So it's cost us a heart. I was going to say, I got to the point yesterday where I was just constantly having the I'm hungry message and just having to wait for these bushes to spawn just to get some food. But um, yeah, we'll talk about XP in a second. So I did run out of energy, I kept working and it's eventually cost me a heart of which you only get three. So it sort of refilled half my energy at the cost of a heart. So I can press B and then I can eat these berries or this citrus gives you a bit more energy. So we'll fill our fuel up a bit more or fill our energy up a bit more get rid of this tree because it's kind of in the way and then we'll make some coal so we've got 25 wood you need two wood to make a bit of coal and then we'll just i don't know let's get 10 bits of coal there so you see the furnace starts wearing away and we've got this progress bar here it's doing sort of five coal at a time and then we can collect that oh, it's happening let's go and collect some more food see what else has popped up on the map We've got enough energy, so let's get some more wood. Another citrus there, they're really good for refilling energy. Collect the rest of the coals that are popping up. The controls here feel really nice, it's sort of really um, smooth to move. I believe later on in the game, when it gets really packed on the map, there is some slowdown in the Switch version, but I'm only going by hearsay. I haven't experienced that myself, but um, I haven't got too far in the game myself yet. So let's talk about XP then. Everything you do in the game, you'll notice you get a little yellow flash of uh, XP indication pop up. So if we chop this tree down, just keep your eyes peeled near the character. And there we get five XP. Then you got your XP bar at the top. We leveled up, we got past the first level and we're on halfway through level two now. So if we press B, and we go um, left here to gear. And you can choose skills or feats. Let's have a quick look at feats first. These are like achievements. So loads of achievements to unlock, which give you special items. So I mean, look how many achievements there are. Well, actually, I can tell you. It says 84 at the top. <laughs> Doesn't take a genius to work that out. But um, yeah, so plenty, plenty to aim for. But some of these will get grindy later on. But at least you've got something to aim for. Uh, so let's have a look at skills, 64 different skills that you can learn. And it's got like this branching tree system. So it starts off with just these four. So you've got industry, economy, magic, and foraging. And let's click on foraging now. So it gives you cotton spawns more often, allows you to find wheat, and allows you to find beets. Industry unlocks steel, unlocks glass, and gain XP when building structures. Economy just gives you 40 coins instantly which to be honest isn't the worst idea because it allows you to open up the next island very quickly and then magic allows you to find fairies but let's go with the 40 coins so hold down a to unlock that skill tree and then you see it starts branching off so we've got coinage so forge creates four extra coins every time when you forge coins which you can do when you find gold and then storage unlocks the ability to have vaults, which obviously allows you to store money and materials. So as you unlock each of these, so if I unlock coinage next, then um, that will spread out and eventually you have a huge sprawling map of um, skills to unlock. 
But let's go back. We've got our 40 coins now, which means we can buy more land. Just collect that. So we see here, we've now got the option on the menu to buy land. So they all come at different prices. So that's 50, 60 for that one, 30 for this one, and 80 for that one. So we can only afford this little bit of green land here. So we'll grab that. These are randomly generated, so they're procedurally generated, sorry. Um, so this land will look different to the land that you unlock. Oh, and that slimes have been unlocked. Good old slimes. They'll get a, quite a bad rep in these games, don't they? Terraria and Minecraft's got slimes in. Obviously, the upcoming Dragon Quest is probably where it all started. A game I'm really looking forward to. So let's go and have a look at our new land. Let's have a quick explore. We've got some bushes here with food actually reminds me we're low on energy somehow we've only got one heart left i don't know how that happened so we need to find a heart really dying in this game there isn't much of a consequence uh, when you do die and lose that last heart you'll get kicked back to the title screen but then you can just reload your save and it pretty much carries on from just before you, where you got killed so there's really not much consequence to dying it's just a, a minor inconvenience there's some cotton. Let's get rid of this slime. Let's go back and see what we can build next. So, we've now got our bricks and iron ingots. So, we can build our forge. Let's say we haven't got our iron ingots and bricks. Oh, we only got our coal, didn't we? Sorry. So, we need to build our bricks. Um, I need to be needed. So we need four bricks and four iron ingots. So let's get working on those. So four bricks. So that will cost us um, eight stone and four coal. Let's get those going. Can only do one thing at a time. So we can't. Um, oh, we can't build anything else while the furnace is in progress. Which makes sense. You won't be able to do that in real life. Farming, keeping on our energy. So this is actual uh, coal, veins of coal that's ready made so we don't have to actually use trees or use wood, sorry, to, to get the coal. You can just mine it, which is fine. So let's get some iron ingots. We need four of those as well. We haven't got enough iron ore, have we? We need eight iron ore to get four iron ingots. So we need another lump of iron. Iron, so let's get from here. Iron ore. We go up a level, which means we get another skill point. That means we can unlock the next thing. So let's have a look at that while the iron's cooking. So this game pretty much carries on like this, really. It's a game. Feels, feels a little bit like a mobile game, I suppose. It just constantly wants you to keep um, improving. So there's not much of a goal in the game as such. It does open up to sort of dungeons and bosses later on. But not to the degree of something like Terraria does, where it's kind of got a driving, not so much narrative, but, you know, a driving goal to keep you pushing forward. Here's just about, you know, slight incremental improvements. You know, you get a better pickaxe to get better mining facilities, to buy more land, to get more resources. It just goes on and on like that. And it's quite a relaxed game. The music in it's quite chilled out. Um, and I knew I'd like this kind of game. It's something a bit different. Terraria can get a bit stressful when you're getting attacked from all angles. And, you know, you've got to figure out kind of yourself what recipes to build so i love terraria you know i do if you've been watching this channel but um, this is more of like something you could probably play while you're watching something on telly or you know maybe uh, listen to music or listen to a podcast or something uh, it's sort of a mindless game and i've not got too many of those on the switch so i knew it'd be a good game to have so let's have a look here so we've got industry foraging magic or we could unlock actually i'm going to go building let's unlock steel and glass so let's unlock industry and see what else that opens up so it opens up sewing which allows us to allows us to unlock leather and sewing stations let's get sped up and carpentry which unlocks torches and structures cost 25 percent less wood which is cool so how are we doing about iron ingots we've got one more to go grab that 
and then we can build our forge. So we need two more iron ingots. Actually, they are still cooking. I think that's the last one. There we go. So we can now build our forge. Let's stick it next to... Let's put it next to that. Oh, let's stick it over there in the corner. That's fine. Let's go and check that out. Whoops, I keep hitting the uh, furnace. We're going to lose that soon. So let's have a look at the forge. So from the forge, you can make coins if you've collected enough gold ingots. And keys, I'm not sure what they do yet. And we've got a slimy pickaxe, which is obviously a better pickaxe. And bottle, which I assume, I haven't tried it yet myself, so I haven't made glass. Let's you catch the flying things that are flying around. But I would work towards the slimy pickaxe next. So we need eight iron ingots. We've got the other materials needed. So let's get working on some more iron ingots. We need iron ore. So we're going to need 10 iron ore and some more coal. So let's get working on that. We're also going to want to start collecting the gold ingots as well. Because then we can make gold coins. Keeping an eye on our energy. Which is slowly depleting. Oh, and we got hit by a slime. Didn't see him coming. So this is a good chance to see game over. So as it will show you here, we'll kick it back to the top. Right? Bit odd, really. I don't know why it kicks you literally right back. You see there that the humble bundle start. This is the chap that made the game, Hot Frog. And here we are back at the title screen. And then we can just load that save back in. And we're literally where we were when we died with the same, you know, we've got the same energy. So I really don't know the point of. Um, of dying to be honest it seems very strange i haven't lost any material <laughs> so i don't know it becomes a, a minor inconvenience i guess but there's no real consequence to dying which is nice It'd be nice if real life was like that get run over by a car and just get kicked back to a title screen and can start again wouldn't that be nice so we'll just grab this last bit of gold because we could probably make some coins Go. So we need some iron ingots. Oh, it says we can only craft one. I thought we collected enough iron ore. Maybe we didn't. Maybe I got distracted. One slight problem in the game, and uh, as you open up more islands, it will get more prevalent. But like stuff just gets in your way, and you have to hack it down. You haven't got much choice. So there isn't any iron ore left on the islands, which is a bit of a nuisance. You have to kind of hope that some spawns. There's one down now. We'll grab that. We'll take the bushes away as well because it does allow for something else to spawn, and they're really, you know, two hits and they're done. So I might as well get rid of them. So we can now do six. Iron ores. We'll get them cooking. Here we go. There's another one spawn. So we'll grab that. As I say, this game's around about £17 on the uh, eShop, about $19 or $20, I guess, uh, conversion. Um, I actually picked this up from the Japanese eShop, believe it or not, because thanks to a lot of you guys, if you are the ones that did it um, and enjoyed my Japanese content on like certainly Jikio Power, Powerful Pro Baseball or Olympics. Um, if you did go via my uh, affiliate link on PlayAsia, I ended up with quite a bit of credit in there. So thanks if you did do that, really appreciate it because it allowed me to pretty much pick this game up for nothing from the Japanese eShop. So I really appreciate that. But would I pay £17 or $20 for it? I don't know to be honest. I have enjoyed what I've played so far. As I say, it's kind of a mindless game. But just that, um, the fact that the roadmap is there just irks me a little bit, that it's not a finished game. And uh, I think Terraria is actually cheaper than this, and Stardew Valley is certainly cheaper. So they've gone quite bold with uh, their pricing structure. They've priced it sort of at the top end of these sort of games. 
but I know from a lot of people when I did my weekly video and you know a few other people have left comments saying they're really looking forward to this one oh, get stamped on by a slime uh, yeah so I know people are looking forward to this and uh, are quite hyped for it so I thought I'd make a quick video just to show you how it plays a little bit about what it's about and uh, how to get killed by slimes I seem to be really good at that but um I'm probably going to leave it there. It's just an early quick look. I hope it gives you a good idea what this one's about. As I say, it's sort of incremental crafting, foraging, as the name suggests, and uh, and building up your islands. I enjoy it. Is it worth $17 to $20? It's up to you, really, um, from what you've seen. I believe there's a demo on the PC, if you want to check that out first. But um, until then, leave me any comments below. Like and subscribe if you like the video. And I will catch you guys next time. Thanks a lot. See you later.